Hello everyone and today uh, we are going to discuss about uh, uh, the basic designing of 2-bit ripple up counter uh, which is a asynchronous counter okay so in this video I am going to uh, discuss about uh, asynchronous counter and especially in asynchronous counter the basic uh, counter which is a 2-bit ripple counter okay so today's topic is uh, asynchronous counters okay so everyone knows about uh, asynchronous counter what do you mean by asynchronous counter so asynchronous counters are the counters in this type the flip-flops are connected in such a way that the output of first flip-flop drives the clock uh, for the second flip-flop and the output of the second out the yeah, sorry the output of the second flip-flop which drives the clock for the third flip-flop and so on that means here all the flip-flops are not connected simultaneously so that is the basic uh, definition for asynchronous counter okay so here in already we, we just now we discussed that term uh, in asynchronous counter today we are going to discuss about the basic uh, uh, counter that is a two bit ripple and we also know that uh, asynchronous counters are also called as uh, ripple counters okay so here in this video so we are designing two bit uh, ripple up counter okay so what do you mean by two bit ripple up counter so here the number of bits how many bits are there two bits are there okay so the two bit ripple up counter counts the number of states are four why because so here if n is equal to 2 why because the number of bits are 2 and the possible number of states are 2 to the power of n states okay so what are the states if you substitute in in the place of n is equal to 2 so it occurs 2 to square that means how many states are there four states are occurs what are the states and the states are which are nothing but 0 1 2 3 these are the four states so after completion of four states again it's it starts count again from 0 1 2 and so on up to this okay so this is a, a basic introduction of a two bit ripple counter okay and now what is the next part our next part is a logic diagram implementation of logic diagram okay so already in the introduction of a asynchronous counters so uh, we already discussed that one point what is that point so asynchronous counters are usually uh, implemented designed by using t flip-flops or jk flip-flops sometimes d flip-flops also so here i'm going to uh, i'm using jk flip-flops for the designing of two bit uh, ripple up counter okay so let us see the logic diagram which is uh, implement and uh, designing of two bit ripple up counter by using jk flip-flop okay so far so again again so how many bits are there two bits are there two bits ripple up counter so to implement two bit ripple up counter we require two flip-flops we require how many flip-flops two flip-flops okay so those two flip-flops here i am drawing here this is this is flip-flop one and this is flip-flop two okay and this is a jk flip-flop so for the first one is the inputs are j1 k1 and second outputs are q1 q1 bar okay for the second flip-flop inputs are j2 k2 and the outputs are q2 q2 bar okay and here one important point that so here j and k are uh, operating at logic one that is toggle mode up condition okay and in this case also j and k j2 that means k2 are uh, applied to logic one that is a toggle condition okay what is the definition of asynchronous counter asynchronous counter so the counters are connected in such a way that uh, the output of first flip-flop drives the clock for the second flip-flop so here what is the output of first flip-flop q1 okay which drives the clock for the second flip-flop so this is so the output of this one which is connected to uh, uh, as a clock input for second flip-flop so here i am using negative edge clock so that's why i'm placing one inverter one triangle and along with bubble okay so for this for first flip-flop also i am using again negative edge clock so this is a clock pulse okay and my outputs are q1 q2 so my outputs are q1 q2 okay so this q1 i am considering as a least significant bit 
and this q2 i am considering as most significant bit so this is the logic diagram implementation of two bit ripple up counter okay and let us see the working operation of this two bit ripple up counter by using timing diagram okay so by using timing diagram here i am drawing this timing diagram see and this is timing diagram so here for the timing diagram we initially we require a clock pulse so this is a, a clock pulse what is a clock pulse clock pulse is defined as a series of a train of pulses so so this is a clock pulse and here one most important point is and this two bit triple up counter is a edge trigger flip flop so here i am following negative edge trigger flip flop so that's why i am used to uh, here indicate this transition 1 to 0 transition so 1 to 0 this is basically logic 0 and this is logic uh, 1 level okay and this flip flop is enabled at 1 to 0 transition in this transition only 1 to 0 transition only this flip flops are enabled okay and this is uh, our clock pulse uh, clock pulse now see um, what are my this one okay so this is 0 and this is 1 initially um, this counter is set to 0 0 so that means uh, the q1 and q2 are at uh, 0 0 so i am i am resetting my this two bit triple up counter so that uh, my outputs of this q1 q2 are at 0 0 okay and now say after applying first clock pulse after applying my first clock pulse what happens here see my clock pulse is this is first clock pulse this is first clock pulse okay so when i apply first clock pulse and as we just now we discussed that uh, this two bit triple up counter is enable enable if and only if the negative edge transition that means one to zero transition this flip flop these two flip flops are enabled if and only if when the clock transition occurs one to zero transition only okay so when the first clock pulse is applied what happens when the first clock pulse is applied the first flip flop toggles at negative going edge of the pulse that's mean here the first flip flop at transition okay so here when the clock pulse reaches 1 to 0 transition 1 to 0 transition the flip flop 1 toggles this first flip flop 1 toggles okay according to the condition of toggle condition what is the meaning of toggle condition when the inputs of j and k are equal to 1 its output is a replica is inverse of the previous output so initially what is the output of q1 q1 is 0 okay so when the clock is 1 to 0 transition this first flip flop is enabled and this first flip flop enable and the j and k1 are connected to logic 1 okay that means this first flip flop is a toggle condition so the q1 is q1 is goes from 0 to 1 this q1 is toggle zero changes from 0 to 1 okay so 0 to 1 up to this so now its value is equal to 1 but uh, what happens here output initially the output of q1 is 0 but uh, after applying first clock pulse after applying this first clock pulse so the q1 is changing from 0 to 1 is changing from 0 to 1 okay so that so here what happens here this second flip flop does not enable okay why it is not enable because this second flip flop enable if and only if the clock transition occurs 1 to 0 transition only 1 to 0 transition so if you see in this logic diagram the q1 which drives the clock for the second flip flop okay so initially the, the q1 value is 0 okay so after applying first clock pulse and the clock transition occurs 1 to 0 transition q1 value changes from 0 to 1 q1 value changes from 0 to 1 only okay so what happens the second flip flop enables if and only if 1 to 0 transition only so that's why the second flip flop does here does not enable why because here the q1 is changes from 0 to 1 transition so this flip flop does not enable so here what is happens here what happens here the output of q2 is remains zero only after applying second 
clock pulse again you are applying second clock pulse say in the logic zero logic zero level the flip-flop one flip-flop first flip-flop does not enable and again one zero to one transition does not enable at logic one again does not enable and again one to zero one to zero transition the flip-flop is enabled the flip-flop is enabled so at that time this j1 k1 are connected to logic one so uh, this is operating toggle condition what happens it changes its uh, previous state that means so it changes from one to zero one to zero okay so again again so initially the value of q1 is one initially the value of q1 is one okay after applying second clock pulse q1 is changes from one to zero transition that means which drives the second flip-flop why because here the initially q1 value is one this value one at second clock pulse okay and again after applying um, the second clock pulse at uh, j1 k1 clock pulse here uh, the toggle condition it changes from output from it changes from one to zero transition so one to zero transition occurs here that means this jk flip-flop second flip-flop is also enabled okay so that's why its uh, outputs are also changes from zero to one okay zero to one and next after applying third clock pulse after applying third clock pulse so again one to zero transition one to zero transition this first flip-flop is uh, enabled so it changes its output value from zero to one again in this mode or at the third pulse again zero to one transition occurs okay so zero to one transition occurs the second flip-flop does not enable why because this jk second flip-flop enables only one to zero transition only okay so here the one will remains one only after applying fourth clock pulse what happens again this one is changing from one to zero okay so here again one to zero transition occurs so it changes zero so initially if you observe if you observe in this case so zero zero so here q1 is this is q2 so my q1 q2 okay or else if you write uh, uh, this is q2 q1 so this is a uh, uh, lsp and this is msp okay so when clock uh, when counter is zero when counter is reset condition my q2 q1 are zero so the decimal value is zero okay after applying uh, first clock pulse uh, this is my uh, this is my output okay after applying second clock pulse what is my output my output is zero one so q2 zero and q1 is one okay and this is a um, uh, first clock pulse and this is second clock pulse. after applying third clock pulse my outputs are one to zero so here this is one so this is zero and this is one and this is two this is two and then after applying third after applying fourth clock pulse my transition is one one so this is two again after applying fourth clock pulse again what happens here so here it comes back to zero zero like this way this counter counts the number of states okay so see here n is equal to 2 so possible states are 4 and 4 states are 0 1 2 3 so possible states are 0 1 2 3 so 0 1 2 3 okay like this way this 2 bit ripple counter by using negative edge triggering okay it works uh, or it counts uh, up counting that is sequences starts from 0 and ends with 3 okay so this is all about a 2 bit ripple up counter okay thank you